Hey everyone, it's Jennifer from stampwithjennifer.blogspot.com and today I want to show you a, a watercolor technique. So first of all, these are the Rose Garden Thinlets dies and this is my package of the dies. And this is the five images that it cuts out. So we'll be using those in our card today. So I just wanted to show you these amazing framelits that are in the catalog. This matches an image in the stamp set. So this technique I learned from one of my downline, Teresa Apperson, and she said she learned it from watching Patty Bennett. And it's, and actually Stampin' Up! tells us about this also in the video for the Wink of Stella pens, which is what we're going to watercolor with today, Wink of Stella. So I have my watercolor paper here. Um, it is cut to five and a fourth by four inches, five and a fourth by four. And then I have my stamp. Look at this giant rose. It's so awesome. And by the way, we're having storms here today in Texas. So you get some nice um, thunder sounds in the background. And the stamp set is Rose Wonder. And the images shown here on the picture in the front are much smaller, as you can tell, than actual size. Okay, so Rose Wonder coordinates with those Rose Garden Thinlets, and of course it's sold in a bundle in the Occasions Catalog in 2016. Okay, so I'm going to use, really the ink color doesn't matter because it's not going to show. So I'm using Basic Gray, which is waterproof, so when we watercolor, the ink won't show. I could also have used Basic Black. Both of those work great with photopolymer stamps. Or I could have even inked up this stamp with the colors that I'm going to paint in. So rose red and garden green. Those are just some options you could do. Um, but this color you'll see is actually going to get covered up later so it won't matter. If you were stamping on a plastic table with photopolymer, make sure you have a foam mat underneath your cardstock. So I have a firm table here, but if your table is soft and flexible like plastic or if it's bumpy, put a piece of foam underneath. Um, of course, we carry our foam mats to make your image stamp nice. Okay, so there's our image. And this one, for whatever reason, actually did not ink up too well right there. But again, these lines are not going to show on the card, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so basic gray and basic black, you do have to let dry for a few minutes. So I'll let that dry and then I'll start the technique. Okay, so I said a few minutes, that was a mistake. Probably 30 seconds or you can just use your heat tool on there. But you do wanna dry basic black and basic gray before you watercolor so they don't bleed. So this is the gold wink of Stella pen. When you buy it, there you unscrew the top and there's a little black ring that you throw away. Then you screw this back on, shake it up, and push where it says push several times. For me, it takes, I haven't even counted, but several pushings for the gold to actually come through. But once it's in there, you should not have to squeeze it again, pretty much ever. Um, if it does seem to dry out after many, 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 many uses, you can give it a couple of squeezes. But in general, you don't need to squeeze it while you're painting with it. And you can just paint directly onto any project with the Wink of Stella, and it'll just add that gold glitter. So keep that in mind. Um, you don't have to watercolor at all with it. It's just a technique. And also, designer paper is a great thing to add Wink of Stella to to make it even more beautiful. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken two reinkers. This is um, rose red and garden green. And I've dropped them into a little plastic container, one of my old embellishment containers. And I've added some water in there to dilute it a little bit and make it um, go with my brush easier, basically. So I'm going to dip this in here. So basically, I'm pretending this is my paint. And this is my paintbrush. And I will just start painting or blending this. So the watercolor paper is what allows us to... Um, get this paper wet repeatedly and it's not going to curl up. It's not go going to start to disintegrate. It basically will keep that paper nice and flat. And then the coloring, so I'm sure 
there are some of you watching this video and you are expert artist I am NOT so as far as shading and all that you can do all of that with this technique you can of course get less paint on your brush and make the color lighter and you know where to add the highlights and the dark and light um, I'm not so good at that so I just color it in kind of like I'm coloring with whatever coloring tool a marker a colored pencil so I'm just filling in all the spots here but again, feel free with this technique to use your artistic skills as well. And I'll continue to color this flower in all the way. And what happens with the gold pen is as you're coloring it, the gold comes out. Hopefully you can see that. But it'll be darker, more gold in certain spots, and lighter or more red in certain spots. So with watercolor paper, the beauty again is if you miss a spot or you want to add shading and you go back over that spot again and again with the water, it's not going to mess up the paper. So you saw me probably fill in some spots there where I had missed or um, whatever, needed a little more color and my paper is not going to get messed up at all. And if your brush is starting to seem a little dry, which mine is, just add a little more water in here. And of course you can add drops of ink as needed okay so what you do when you finish one color is you clean this off on your scratch paper or a paper towel until it looks gold again instead of whatever color you just used because of course you can color with any colors so um, we're getting that pink out and it will go back to pretty much just gold and then I'm gonna get there's some water right there with my garden green and mix it in and then just paint the leaves okay so when you get it all finished the again the beauty of this wink watercoloring with wink of Stella is all the shimmer that's in there hopefully you guys can see that on the video here basically the entire image is shimmery with gold glitter but there's no mess you still get the watercolor effect and you get the shimmer on top of that so it's so awesome and then what we're gonna do is attach the die cut on top and that's why I said that the ink color we stamped in wouldn't show because we're gonna completely cover that with our die cut image and this is um, our gold foil paper so it's gonna look really pretty and I'm gonna use the fine tip glue pen which is an amazingly skinny glue, <laughs> which is kind of what we need for this type of project. I like to let me get this started. I like to dot the glue along rather than do a stream. Um, I don't that's just what I like. So for this large image, you do a lot of dotting. You want fine, you know, little dots, not too thick, but you don't want to go so slow that the first glue you put down is dry before you put this on your card. So move quickly, just don't glob it on there. Okay, so that should be good. And I'm just going to um, very carefully place this down on top of the stamped image. It is an exact match, so aligning it's not too difficult. And I'm going to try not to just smack it down because I don't want the glue to ooze out everywhere. But this glue does need a little time to set it's not the type of glue where you can just place it down on your project and walk away immediately it will peel back up if you do that and not stick and you'll have to re-glue it so just what I'm doing right now is good um, I'm trying not to rub my fingers around because I don't want to spread the excess glue around I want it to just stay where it is and dry clear 
So I think that's good. Of course, when you pick up your hands, if something pops up, put it back down and hold it. But that's how you glue this down. With your fine tip glue, when you put the lid back on, make sure you put this little needle-like thing in the applicator tip. That will keep it clean so that the next time you use it, you don't have to clean out the dried up glue. Okay, so to finish off this card, I have a piece of garden green cardstock. It is eight and a half by five and a half, and I folded it in half already. And that's where the front will get attached to. And then I stamped from the, oh, it's still popping up, from Rose Wonder. I stamped the, the frame image and with sympathy, but of course any of these greetings really would work for this card. And then I die cut it out with the framelits. And I'm going to add a couple of Stampin' Dimensionals on the back. And place that right here. I just stamped this on Whisper White. So that's why it's a little wider than the watercolor paper. I'm going to just attach that to the front of my card. I like Fast Fuse Adhesive. And I normally do a lighter card base, like white or vanilla or crumb cake. So since this one's darker, I just cut another piece of Whisper White four by five and a fourth that I will put inside the card. You could stamp inside, but also it's for you to be able to write a greeting. And if you're gonna stamp inside, I would stamp that before you glue this down. You don't wanna have to deal with fixing that. So that's the card. We are making this card at my card class this month in March. So if you wanna to come to class, there's still time to sign up right now. Hope to see you again at stampwithjennifer.blogspot.com. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Of course, all these supplies are available on my website, jennifers.stampinup.net. And you, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. So just click here for that.